and welcome to Knitting Blooms. My name is Tina and this is episode number 63. Today is Saturday, July 14th and welcome to the show. Thanks for stopping by and watching this week and every other week that you stop to watch. I've had a busy week this week um, with work and around the house. Mostly um, during the week, I don't do, we don't do a whole lot of stuff around the house. We haven't been for um, the projects that we have to get done for um, the furnace and what have you, but it's been busy at work. And um, I was going to record last night, but yesterday was so busy at work that by the time I got home, I just wanted to chill out. I didn't, I didn't have it in me to, <laughs> to record, so... It's better this way because now you can get me fresh, but actually we've been working all day. It's now a little bit after 5 o'clock on Saturday, and we've pretty much been working all day um, taking out the baseboard radiators and trying to clean up from that mess. What an adventure, <laughs> let me just tell you. We, I think we might have bitten off more than we can chew. Um... You know, we knew that there was going to be work to be done after the furnace got put in. What we didn't think about was the fact that every single room in the house has to be repainted. Because those baseboard um, radiators had... We, we painted a lot of the rooms since we've moved in, but... And the room... Uh, most of the rooms that we've painted, we took the old radiator covers off and Steve built new radiator covers but you still could not paint behind that the uh, pipe so needless to say every single solitary room has to be repainted it's probably not something that we're gonna do all at once obviously <laughs> but I think probably over the next year or so um, we'll be painting every room in the house. There'll be some rooms that we kind of hold off on because we know that we're going to do additional work in and there's no point in painting and then redoing it. Um, we did find that the linoleum in the kitchen and in the bathroom um, was put in after the baseboard heaters were and it's kind of just rolled up on the wall. It's just something that we're going to have to live with for a while. <laughs> It's going to be fabulous with the new furnace and the AC, so I'll deal with all that other stuff. So, I'm going to start with um, kind of a stash enhancement thank you, because I got a special gift in the mail this week, and um, I'm sure you will not be surprised by who it was from, because this person is probably the most generous person I have ever met and actually I haven't actually met her, but the most generous, one of the most generous people I've ever known. And here is a clue. Yep, it would be from Diana at the Knittables podcast. She was so sweet. When she went to SSK, she brought me back a little surprise. So this is what she brought me. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? It's um, Hiawassee Creek um, Dye Works. And it's pink and green and it sparkles! I love it. It's a self-striping sock yarn. And I haven't decided. I'm probably going to make socks with it. But it is just absolutely yummy. I mean, how can I not love the, those colors? Pink and green. So thank you so much, Diane. I so appreciate it. You are such a sweetheart. I, I just, you are just so sweet. I can't believe you would think about me when you're off just having a good time and shopping. So I really, really appreciate the, the gift, and I can't wait to knit it up. So awesome. Thank you again. So that is my one and only stash enhancement this week. Um, I did place another order with, um, 
wool gatherings for the um, completely twisted and arbitrary um, spinning group. Um, I had already placed an order for both of the colors and the um, solids or the semi-solids in BFL. And then I happened to be checking out the thread this week and I saw that somebody had also ordered the feather one that, that's like the pinks and the, the, the bright pink and the green and the blue. Um, somebody had also ordered the, the light pink to match and the dark green to match and it looked absolutely fabulous. So I ordered both of those and another feather in the Polworth silk because I'm finding I really like the Polworth silk. Uh, so that will be coming in the mail to me. And like I said, I think I said before that I'm trying to stay on a, on a yarn diet or a fiber diet until Rhinebeck with the exception of the Into the World Fiber Club and also the um, Completely Twisted and Arbitrary group. Uh, when they have the special dyers. So, so far I have kind of stuck to that. Um, I did find myself on the fiber optics board uh, or website today as well as Miss Babs, but I clicked off. <laughs> I was safe. I didn't order anything. So, I'm going to save the drawing for the... Um, Feature dyer for last today, so I'm going to jump right into my um, finished objects. Oh, sorry, Sammy. I want to show you. Last week I showed you the um, through the loop shawl. It was not blocked. I did block it last Sunday, and here it is. And I hope you can see, I probably will have to block it again because I'm not sure if I blocked it quite well enough. I was kind of rushing because um, I had to block it on the bed that we're currently sleeping on. And I forgot to block it. I put it on my desk so when I got up and I checked my email in the morning, I would remember and go and get it soaking and then blocking but I forgot about it till about noon. So I had to soak it and then put it on the blocker and then hope that it was dry enough to take it off when we went to bed at, at 9 or 9.30 or whatever time. And it was dry enough, but I think I kind of rushed through it. But I did kind of scallop the edges a little bit at the bottom. But I really like how it turned out. I really, really like how it turned out. It's... um. Not quite my wingspan. I can stretch it to be my wingspan, but it's not quite as wide as my... No? No touching. Um, but it's not quite as wide as my wingspan, but I really, really like how it came out. This is the first time that I've blocked a shawl where it's got like a scallop at the bottom instead of um, points. But I really felt like it needed the scallops more than the points. But maybe I needed to pull the edging out just a little bit more from the scallops. Maybe it needed to still go into a little bit of point but still be scalloped up a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to show this but but anyway I really like how it turned out and I probably will wear it at least once before I try and reblock it again but I still haven't woven in my ends yet but that will come. I still have I still have my Pamua shawl to uh, weave in the ends bad but it's been so hot that I haven't really been wearing shawls so it's not like I've been missing out on wearing it because the ends aren't woven in I have my palm US shawl in this bag as well all my stuff that needs to have ends woven in is in this bag and so I need to do that so that's kind of, it was really a finished object last week, but I wanted to show it to you blocked. My true finished object for this week is the Just Ducky Socks. And apparently I took the um, stitch marker out of this one. I think this is the one that I was finished. Oh yeah, I was finished with this one last week. That's why I took the stitch marker out. I finished this one and that one I showed you last week as a hoe. And then I finished this one. 
So I had that much to go. And I finished that up this week. So those are both done. I love basic socks. Um, there's just, I mean, you just pull them out of your bag and knit, 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 knit. And I know my short row heel inside and out, so I don't have to have instructions. I can just go, and I know how long they have to be. The only thing is, is when I'm working the foot, um, I do have to have a ruler until I get to the heel, just to make sure that I get, I put the heel in at the right place, because I haven't quite figured out how to measure without a ruler, but Maybe that's going to be the next thing that I work on is trying to figure that out so I can just take a ball of yarn and some needles and go and not ever have to have any instructions or ruler or anything. So that pair is done. I would like to start another pair of basic socks, but they're probably going to be the basic socks for my mom. Um, the giggle jelly that I spun up for her and I did the shawl, the seashells shawl. Um, I have that yarn to make socks for her. I really would like to get the um, effervesce socks off the needles before I start her socks, but I have a feeling that that's not going to happen because I really do like a basic project that I can carry around with me like this that um, if I just need to run out, if I need to just drop it in my bag and need brainless knitting, then basic socks is a good thing. However, sorry, I have been using another project, which I now kind of have memorized to get me through, um, and that is preemie hats. I didn't weave the, weave the ends in on this one. So I did make two preemie hats. This one I actually made a while ago, and I just haven't shown you. And then this one I made this week. So, and I kind of have it, you know, cast on 72 stitches and then knit so many rows of ribbing and then knit so many rows before you start doing the decreases. And so I think I can do these as quick, easy uh, projects as well. So I might do that until I can finish the effervesce socks because I'd really like to get those off the needles before I start a new project. But, um, and I'm looking at these two hats, and they were done on the same size needles, but look at the difference in size. I don't, it's really weird how much bigger this one is than this one. I don't know, weird. It's the yarn, I guess. And then I also started another one in the, um, the Just Ducky colors, which looks like it's also going to be another big sock. Are in a big hat, bigger hat, probably the same size as, as this one. So I will probably just kind of work on um, these preemie caps and ha get a whole slew of them saved up and then um, send, you know, 15 or 20 or something to one charity or whatever. Kind of like the, um, the dishcloths. I can just kind of do a bunch of them and then I have them in my um, I have them completed so that if I need to give them to somebody or need to use them, they, I just have them. So that I've been kind of working on, on and off, whenever. But these are my finished object for the week. I don't know where to put these. I've got Sammy laying on all my stuff over here. So, um, what projects did I not work on this week? I have a nice glass of iced tea. I don't know what it is about iced tea in the summertime. I love iced tea. I don't, and in the wintertime, I don't even think about drinking iced tea. But um, I have one of those Mr. Coffee iced tea makers where you pour some water in, you put the tea bags in, and then you put some ice in the pitcher and it drips out into the pitcher and it's cool. Love it. Okay, the projects that I didn't work on this week are, um, and I have to remember because I didn't write them down. I usually write them down. 
so I remember. I didn't work on the effervescent socks. Bad. But my brain needed a break from something like that. I did not work on the fornicating reindeer so or reindeer hat. Um, so really, those are the only two projects that I didn't work on this week. Not bad. That's not bad. I do need to get back to working on the effervescent socks. Um, which is one of the reasons why I don't want to start another pair of socks before I finish those because I'm just afraid that they're going to keep getting put off. So let's get back to my whips. Okay, so I worked on the color affection and let me tell you about the color affection. It is majorly fun. I didn't realize how fun this project was until I got to the three colors. If you haven't made this shawl, you need to make it. Everybody needs to make this shawl. Because I can tell you, if you like self-striping socks, and it's one of those things where it's just one more stripe, just one more stripe, just one more stripe, this is the project. So here we are. I moved my marker. I had it down in the center over here, but then it would have been hard for you to see how exactly how much I had done. But I have done this many rows because I'm on the short rows now with the three colors. And I'm kind of, yeah, this is right. So here we go. It is awesome. I love it. Um, the issues that I'm having with this, at the beginning, when I first started the three colors, um, the pattern talks about twisting the yarn, and I kind of did a little bit, but I only, actually you can see it a little bit better on the back, but I only twisted around the color that I was using and the color right before it, and I wasn't really liking those long, long floats. So then what I started to do is twisting the yarn around each other all the way up. So for instance, if my last color was gray, my previous color was pink, and my next color is black, which is the bottom color. So if you look at it like this, my next color is black, and I would take this and I would wrap it around the pink color, and then I would wrap it around the gray, and then I would start knitting with it. This is what made the twist around there, down the side. And that was looking a lot better. I also added the extra yarn over after the first stitch to help give it a little bit more give. And I also used yarn overs for my make ones and then I knit them through the back loop on the following row. So I am loving this project. Seriously, I have had to force myself to put this project down and work on other projects because I've just wanted to keep going and keep going and keep going uh, because it's been so much fun. Another thing that I did, which is just basic stupidity, um, I read the project or read the pattern and I just pulled my needle got stuck in there and now it's pulled this stitch out and made it elongated a little bit. I'll have to work that back in later. Anyway, I read the pattern and then I just did what I wanted to do. <laughs> and then I thought about it after I had started. And I, at first when I realized I was doing something that wasn't quite right, I figured, oh, it's no big deal. It's going to be fine. And then I realized, wait a minute, I might run out of yarn if I keep going this way. What I did up into this point where this marker is, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it because I don't have too many rows after it, but... Um, the pattern calls to calls for you to knit to um, three stitches, you know, past a wrap or whatever. And I was knitting to the wrap. I was doing wrap one, two. So that was the three stitches. So I was technically only knitting to two stitches past the wrap. Um, but 
I realized that if I keep doing that, I'm going to have more rows, which means that I might run out of yarn. I don't think I will, but I got nervous. So at this point where this marker is, I started to go the full three stitches. So like I said, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, and I'm hoping that once you, once I get it done, it's not going to be able to be, to be able to be noticed too much. So I just started doing it the correct way so that... I hopefully won't run out of yarn um, and like I haven't gone too far so it's not like I'm on these really really long rows um, so hopefully it'll be okay we'll see I still have if I show you I have this much left I've done this much at this point I probably am one-third of the way through all of the stitches so lots of stitches still on the needles Crystal is now down in her little tube, so if you hear the crinkling, that's what you're hearing. I still have lots of stitches to go on the needles, but I'm very much enjoying this project. Um, like I said, I have to force myself to put it down to get progress on other projects, but um, I really do love it. It's a great project for me to work on when I need mindless knitting because I pretty much... Um, master the pattern and I know for sure that I will be making at least one more of these um, shawls if it's for a gift or for myself or whatever it's fun okay so that's my color affection I also worked on Inishvig excuse me can I have this bag sorry sorry lay down right there here Sammy's laying over here. I just had to disrupt her nap. So in this bag, remember... Oh, there, here comes Steve. He had gone out to buy me some wine. I'm making, um, I'm going to try and make beef wellington. Anyway, a niche bag is my uh, Rhinebeck sweater. And these are the two sleeves that I have finished. And I am working on the back now. I haven't got too much done. I started this on Thursday. And I had hoped to get one full repeat done to show you. But I didn't quite get a full repeat. But this is the back. It looks huge. And it probably will be. Because I'm making the size to fit me now. But I'm hoping... By the time Rhinebeck rolls around, I would have lost 15 pounds, so I don't know if it's even going to fit me at Rhinebeck, but if it doesn't fit me, I will find somebody who loves it and will wear it. It's going to be, I think it's the, um, the 40, excuse me, I think it's the 42, because it's supposed to have... A little bit of ease and this is already would already be about three inches bigger than where I am now so we'll see how it goes I like the pattern I like the um the cabling uh, the Steve stitches eh, okay uh, I'm dealing with it but I did put markers in at the um, at the pattern at the patterning section just so I can have mindless knitting but it's coming along. I have, I think I'm, I think I'm at row, I have a little sticky over here. I want to say I'm at row, I think I'm at row 17, because I think the next row has a decrease in it. And, um, I have to double check. It's either 17 or 18 that I'm at, or 19, because I'm, on our right side row. Anyway, 17 or 19, but it's coming along. I Again, I had to force myself to stop with the um, color affection to get some of these other projects done. So that's coming along. This is not the best project to be working on in the summer because, hey, it's heavy. I forgot I had all these stitch markers in here so I can take these out and put these on other projects. I had 
all my stitch markers in my um, sleeve so I could see where my next increase was. So, but yeah, this isn't the best project to be working on in the summer because it is a chunky weight yarn. But I've been mostly working on it at work where I have central AC and in a week and a half, I will have central AC in my house. It's going to be awesome. So that's in Nishbeg. And that's in my Knitting's My Bag bag. This is the large bag, and this is the one that um, I had Lois pick out the colors for me, and I love it. It's absolutely cool gorgeous and I love this bag this large bag I just it's perfect for a sweater so that's that project and I also restarted the summer solstice shawl and you'll hear my beads in my bag um, I ordered some new I ordered some new beads I had originally ordered beads from the bead wrangler and on this particular yarn, which is Vulmiza um, Twin, the beads just did not go on the yarn. Um, I tried, I struggled, I tried to force it. I didn't even get through one row of beads before I finally just gave up. And then I started knitting the knitting nups, and I just really wasn't feeling the nups. So I ordered some new beads, and I ordered them from uh, Fire Mountain Gems. Fire Mountain Gems. And again, this is the size 6 bead, and um, their website is firemountaingems.com. Let's see, I have a rubber band on these because I just have them tossed in my, my project bag, and I really do not want them to go everywhere. So that's the beads I'm using and let me tell you having the right size hole makes a huge difference because I originally started working with my crochet hook with the other beads and it just wasn't working and then I tried the my box is all squished and mangled because I have it also tossed in my knitting bag. But then I tried the Super Floss. And the other beads, even with the Super Floss, it just wasn't working. But these beads are working so much better. Now I have to say that even with the crochet hook, with these beads, um, the crochet hook is a little bit big. But, um, but the Super Floss is working like a dream. And I have the first, I'm going to show it, it's a mystery shawl, but I'm so far behind on the mystery that I'm not even worried about spoiling somebody. Um, but I have the, I finished the first chart, and I think I'm getting ready to start the second bead row on the second chart. So, there's what it looks like so far. You can't really see the beads so much on this side, at least in the camera, I can't see them. Um, I've got lots of light angles today because I've got the, the main big picture window open here and then also my, my big studio lights too. But there's how it's coming. I did add an extra repeat um, to make the shawl a little bit larger since I have the Volmiza and I believe the pattern calls for like 430 yards or something to that effect and the Volmize I think is 525 yards so I think I'll have enough um, let me show you from a different so here's let's see here's a full two repeats so you can see how that looks but I really like how it's coming along the beads are so much better than the original beads and I really am liking it a lot. Um, I've only gotten a few rows done on this because it's it's one of those projects that I have to be able to focus and concentrate and I don't like interruptions so the few times that I have had a chance to work on it at my office um, I've had to you know 
put it away or whatever when things got busy. But, but that's coming right along. I'm hoping to finish the second chart and possibly start the third chart this week. So, those are my knitting projects. And I have spinning, too. So, spinning. I'm trying to think. I think last week when I recorded, I had not finished spinning the um, wool gatherings Polworth. But I did, and I also plied it. And here it is. Um, it hasn't been washed or thwacked or anything like that because I forgot to wind it. I finished plying it on Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday morning. I think I started plying it on Monday. Um, or maybe it was Tuesday morning I finished it. Whatever day it was, I had planned on, because I finished it in the morning, and then I had planned on coming home and um, winding it off on the Nitty Naughty that night and soaking it. And I forgot. And then the next night I did, which I think was Thursday. And because I thought I was going to record on Friday. Uh, that is my iced tea. Please don't drink it. Thank you. <laughs> that would be Mickey. Um, because I thought I was going to record on Friday evening, I decided not to wash it because I didn't think I it would dry in time, and then here it is Saturday evening. So had I washed it Thursday night, I think it would have been dry, but how am I supposed to know what was going to happen? But here it is. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, I, what I did was I took the fiber and I split it straight down the center long ways. Um, to try and keep the colors together as much as possible. And I think I did a pretty good job. Now, when I was plying this, there was a couple of times when the colors were really far off. So what I did was I pulled out, it actually happened to be the bobbin that was larger. So I just would pull out some and at first I just pulled out and I was going to toss the fiber away. Well, then the second time it happened, I decided, well, why am I wasting all this extra single? I can just pull it off onto another bobbin and then I can m maybe ply it for something else afterwards, which is what I did. So I wound it off. So when it got to be too much of a contrast in color, I would break the yarn or break that one single, wind it off onto another bobbin and then keep going with this one, with um, the bulk of the yarn. And then it happened, it, so it happened three times that I had to pull off. So I ended up with, hmm, yeah, I guess I did. I, had, I ended up with three bobbins um, at the end and I ended up plying them all together. In fact, maybe I had four, I can't remember. Anyway. It was three or four that I ended up plying at the very end. So one end is kind of a little bit different. But um, but actually, most of the extra color was green. So it ended up working out. But I love it. I've had this uh, fiber in my stash since for over a year. And... Um, I can't believe I waited this long and I really don't think that you're getting the full benefit of the color because all the different types of light that I've got going on here. Um, but it is so gorgeous. I'll have to take another, I'll have to take a picture um, with my lights downstairs which probably won't happen for a while because all my picture, all my little, um, my like my photo booth type thing is packed away in a box so but I really like how it turned out I don't know the exact yardage yet I did count the wraps and there's 230 wraps and I think this was on an approximately a two yard um uh 
I can't think. Nitty knotty. <laughs> I think it was approximately a two yard nitty knotty. So um, I'm pretty sure there's probably about 460 yards in this of a fingering to light fingering. And again, since I haven't washed it, it might bloom. I've heard that Polworth um, does bloom quite a bit. So it might still bloom a little bit and it might end up being a decent sized fingering weight yarn. So, um, what, there we go. I was wondering, why is that not focusing? But I love it. Again, I can't believe I left it in my stash this long, but I love how just splitting it straight down the center keeps most of the colors together. And I really, and even, even with the sections that are a little bit barber pulled, I still love those sections as well. So that was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to wash it and um, and see what it looks like when it's completely completely washed and done and dried and ready to knit up. And then I started some more fiber because with Torta Fleece, I am trying to spin for at least an hour every single day. So every day when I get home from work, I come and I sit down at my at my wheel and. If I spin for an hour and then if I want to quit after that, I do. If not, I just keep spinning. Um, I think most evenings I've spun for an hour and a half to two hours or whatever, depending. But I started this. And this is um, fiber optic. And I think... I think it's cranberry to evergreen. Maybe not. No, I think that's my other one. I forget what it's called now. Let me see if I can jump over there real quick and get you the exact name. Because um, I forgot. I thought I knew what it was, and then I forgot. Nope. Well, it does say Cranberry to Evergreen, but what's the other one? Nutmeg to Celadon? You know what? Now I don't know, because both of the skeins... Both of the fibers in my thing say cranberry to evergreen. Okay, that is definitely... Okay. This one, which is the one that I'm not working on right now, is cranberry to evergreen. But the other one, which I am working on now, is not cranberry to evergreen. Oh, this is bitter lime to rose. But Oh, I see what I did. This is bitter lime to rose. And, yeah, you're not going to get a good image of it, but um, because of all the colors, lighting and whatnot in here today. Um, bitter Lime to Rose. So I've already gotten through the first color, which is a um, bright green. And this is what I have left. And on the camera right here, it's showing up as a purpley purple, but it really is more of a reddish purple. So, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn up when I actually do it. But anyway, so I've been spinning this. I am going to keep it um, and spin it one straight single and then Navajo ply it. And I am trying to keep it spinning fairly thin. And I have it here on my sidekick. And hopefully I can get it up here to show you. Whoops. So there it is on the sidekick, and that is how thin it is. It is very thin, and um, I really love it. It's taking a lot of time to do, but it's coming along quite nicely. And because I am spinning an hour or more, oh, sorry an hour or more a day, I'm getting quite a bit done. I don't know if I'll be able to finish spinning all of this within the next week with as thin as I'm spinning it, but I'm certainly going to try. Um, like I said, I did finish the whole first color. Color, I have the rest of this tealy color and then the blue, the purplish blue, well actually the blue here, and then the, the purple, 
the bluish purple and then the uh, the regular purple and then the red or the the rose so that's still quite a bit to spin between now and the end of the week so the likelihood of me finishing it is probably pretty slim but I am enjoying it it is very thin um, there are times that I think it gets a little bit too thin and I have to break it and add a little bit more fiber in there and then there's other times that gets a little bit thicker but I think that's what you get when you get when you do hand spun so I'm enjoying it I have thought about starting um, some more fiber and I don't know if I'm going to do it I might I might start some um, of the um, I don't even know if I have it in here or not the alpaca that I purchased when I was at uh, Knittopia. I'm thinking that that's the next thing that I would like to spin up. I don't know if I have it in here. I don't. I took a picture of it, and I don't think, and I never posted it in here. So, I think that's what I'm going to start spinning next, because I would really like to be able to spin up that alpaca and make um, a shawl or something that I can either auction off or give as a some kind of a, a door prize or raffle ticket prize or something like that. Um, so, and then I want to make myself a shawl too. So it would be kind of nice to be able to have the fiber that I purchased at this past Knittopia finished and spun and knit by the next Knittopia. But that might be trying to uh, take on more than I can because I'm already knitting a sweater for Knittopia. We're doing a uh, the Knit Along with the Knit Swirl book for um, Knittopia 2013. So we'll see. I probably will start the, um, the alpaca on the ladybug since that one that wheel is not being used right now but I am kind of finding that I really don't need two wheels because every time that I've uh, been spinning on one the other wheel has been kind of laying dormant I did ply the Polworth um, the wool gatherings Polworth on the ladybug yeah I did um, I put it on the onboard Lazy Kate and plied right from that, which I loved for regular two ply. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I am um, enjoying my sidekick more now. So I just I just am finding that I really don't have a have a need for two wheels because I can only spin one at a time. Um, and usually when I'm spinning on one, I just want to get that fiber finished and then do the next one. But then you wonder, well, why do you have so many pairs of needles? Because you can only knit on one project at a time. I know. It's a little crazy. What can I say? So I think that's all I have for you today. Oh, huh forgot the drawing. Where's the yarn? Did you steal my yarn? Oh, here it is. I thought Sammy was sleeping on it. Okay, so um, the featured dyer this time was uh, Hambly. And did you see that she has all kinds of new stuff in her store? I was over there. I saw it. I have been eyeing a few things. Let me go to the other view so you can see a bunch at one time. Are you going to walk over me, little one? Come on. <laughs> so, here is what's in her store right now. Awesome awesomeness. I'm getting lots of reflection. I have been looking at um, this one right here. Let me show you a bigger picture of it. That one. I love these tweeds. I just love them. This one is purple, pink, and uh, yellow. And 
and I've also been looking at um, which one was it I think it was this one This is, um, I think this is the lace. This is extra, yeah, this is the lace. 874 yards of a sparkly lace in pink. And I think that the camera is doing a funny thing because it's not, it's really, really washed out. But it's a bright, bright, vibrant pink. And, oh, I want to order that so bad. I just need to stop ordering stuff um and then the other one which is also a dongle tweed is this purple lovely lovely i love it and again i think that color is so washed out hopefully when i download it to the computer it looks a lot different but on the screen not so much but go and check out the website because you'll be able to see all these things. And if you go there, check the sales because maybe she sold some really cool stuff. I'm, I'm not sure. I never really asked her if she does custom orders. And she is in the UK, but her prices are reasonable and the shipping is reasonable. So you order a couple of, a couple of skeins of yarn and... Um, it'll be even better. So yeah, go check out her shop and I am also going to announce the winner. So she has lots of yarn and then the, um, she now has a three month pure luxury sock club. She also have a three month fiber club and a three month lace club. Those three at the bottom there. So if you want to get in on uh, those clubs. Go and check them out. Awesome. I really have to stop buying yarn. Because right now I can't even get to my yarn. Two more weeks and the basement is the first thing that's going back together. I'm telling you that right now. Anyway, okay, so here is the prize for this drawing. It is this lovely um, superwash merino, 370 meters um, sock yarn. And I think it's in the Trinidad colorway. So beautiful, beautiful yarn. And it is going to lucky number two. Yes, two, which Two never gets chosen, so anyway, so number two, um, Knitting Amy K. And you know what? I'm assuming that it's her name is Amy, but I print, I went in and I looked this up, and I didn't even think to go and go and look at her name. So let me see if I can jump over there real quick. Bad, bad podcaster. I pulled the number and then I just okay, let's go record. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. Go back. Um, where did it go? Oh, there it is. So, number two, Knitting Amy K. And yes, her name is Amy. So, Amy, congratulations. You have won this awesome, awesome yarn. And just get in contact with me, and I will get this in the mail to you. And I do want to apologize to Terry Knits. She won the stitch markers last week, and I have been remiss and have not sent them yet. So, Terry, I am truly, truly sorry. Um, I forgot to take them with me to work three times this week, and then on Thursday I finally took them to work with me, with me, and then it got busy at work, and I never got it packaged up. So, I promise I will get that in the mail to you this next week. Usually, I'm not like this, but... This has been a crazy week. So I'm sorry about that, Terry. I will get that those stitch markers in the mail to you this coming week. And that is all I have. So congratulations, Amy, for winning the yarn this week. 
just get in contact with me and I will get that in the mail to you. And that's all I have. I hope to uh, be spending the rest of the evening right here. Knitting, spinning, watching podcasts or a movie. I think we um, recorded the um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo on our DVR. So that is probably what we are going to be watching this evening. Hopefully. We'll see. So, that's all I have for you. I hope you guys have a great week, and I hope you're knitting blooms this week. So, I will talk to you next weekend. Bye for now.